Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to create diagrammatic overlays in Illustrator. This lesson will focus on creating hatches, changing line weights and adding different line types and fills onto a background photograph such as this. I'll be using the file from the previous tutorial I did on creating hybrid black and white and colour photos in Photoshop as a background template and we'll be working in and adding some diagrammatic overlays to this image. Now, to begin with, we're going to just start by opening up a brand new Illustrator file. So we're going to File, New, and we're just going to make a standard A4 portrait page. It doesn't matter what you make for your file because you can adjust this later on if needs be. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my photograph we're going to be using as our background template, and I'm just going to drag and drop this into my Illustrator file, like so. Now, you see it might come in slightly bigger than your Illustrator artboard, so you can always just move and rescale that to suit. And we're just going to put it in the middle of the page there. Now, once I've brought this in, you'll see much like Photoshop, Illustrator works in layers on the side, and we've got layer one, which our background photo is on. So I'm just going to double click and change this name to photo, and we're going to lock that layer so I can no longer select or draw over this photo. We now have that in place and we're just going to be using it as a background so we don't actually want to do any changes to it within Illustrator. So I'm going to lock it and keep it there. Now I'm going to make a new layer called Diagram. And this is the layer which we're going to be drawing over the top of my photograph in. So first thing I want to do within this diagram is I want to kind of use this as a way of highlighting these particular white containers on the back of this train as shown here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to outline the white containers in my diagram layer. And to do that we're going to be using the pen tool here. The pen tool creates a kind of continuous line within Illustrator and also creates a fill for that line as we go. And this fill and line colour is dictated by these two panels down here. Now, for now, we're just going to keep it as black and white, and we're going to change the colour once we've drawn it. So, just using the pen tool, I'm going to just zoom in onto this corner. I'm using holding down the Alt key and using the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out. There. And we're just going to start by just tracing around the edge of this container, like so. And I mean, you can do it as accurately or as inaccurately as you want just to get the basic outline, like so. Now, for this, actually, I don't want a solid fill colour. We're going to be adding a hatch into this fill, but we'll be doing that a bit later. So for now, I'm just going to take out the fill colour by selecting that white panel down here and just clicking on this little box with a red line for it, which is no fill, and it will take that out. Now we just have our kind of black outline. So for this, I actually want to have a kind of red outline, so I'm going to double click on the stroke setting here, and we're just going to change the colour to a orangey red, something like that. And I'm actually going to change the stroke weight as well to make the line a little bit thicker from a one point to a two point there, so it's quite visible and very sort of easy to see, like so. So now we've done that, I'm going to do the same thing for my carriage down here. Going to quickly trace around the edge. Just trace around these bits too, like so, and then make sure you close off by starting, you know, finishing where you started there, like so. So now we have both of those containers with their line around the edge to denote that they're there. Now I want to add a hatch <coughs> in onto this layer. Now you can just add a fill colour by going back in the fill panel and adding a colour here, but we want to add a particular hatch type to this object. And to do that, we go up to the top left, just under the file, there's our kind of fill colour preset here. If we click on the drop down, in the bottom left it's got our swatch libraries. Now if we open this up, there has a kind of multitude of different swatch libraries we can add. And most of these are sort of solid colours or gradients we can add in, or patterns we can add in as the colour on our object. We want to add a particular line pattern for this, and I want a sort of line at a 45 degree angle added onto here. So I'm going to go to Patterns, Basic Graphics, and Basic Graphics Lines. 
this then brings up this panel of a kind of multitude of different line types in here and we're going to just be using the first one and I'm just going to double click to apply it. Now you see at the moment it's got a black line and it's going horizontally. I actually want my line type to be the same colour as my outline so I want it to be orange and I want it to go at a 45 degree angle so like a diagonal hatch. Now to do that we can just minimise graphics over here and I'm going to move that there for now. We have to edit the specific hatch we're applying here and to edit a hatch all we have to do is in the fill you see that the hatch has now been applied to that fill colour. We can click on that fill colour and we can drag it out into our artboard space and this now kind of creates a little preview of what the hatch is and what we can do is we can actually adjust this hatch within our artboard and then bring it back in to be used as a fill again. So to edit this what we first have to do is we have to ungroup the hatch because you'll see it's a collection of lines here but it also has this kind of square box which is the preview window for the hatch and we don't want to be adjusting the line weight of that we want to keep that invisible so we need to go object ungroup or shift ctrl g to ungroup those lines into kind of a series of lines and then we've got the bounding box there and we just want to select the lines and we want to deselect just by holding down the shift key clicking on that square outline and deselect that outline so now all we have are the horizontal lines selected with those selected we can now change the color and i'm going to be using the color picker tool or the eyedropper tool to just select the color of one of my outlines i've already made there so they match and i'm actually going to take the stroke weight down on this to a one there. so it's slightly thinner than the thicker outline we have and I just want to do that to create a slight kind of differentiation between the line and the line weight. Now once you've got the colour and that's all set we then select all these lines again and we group them back up like so and then you just select the group click and drag and drop back into the fill menu so the reverse of what we did to get it out originally. And what you'll see there, it's got a little preview now of that being applied as a fill. And we can test that just by drawing any shape. I've just got a circle here. And you can see now that that's got an orange line fill in the middle of it. So that's great. Now we've changed the colour of the fill for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select my original line and we're just going to eye drop and pick that new fill colour for the middle there. I see it's also changed my stroke weight back to a 1, so I'm just going to adjust that be back to a two there. Now that's great but it's still going horizontally and I actually want my lines to go at a 45 degree diagonal angle. So to change that we need to transform just this pattern to make sure the pattern is rotated slightly. So I'm just going to delete these off so I can't see them anymore. Now we've used them and we're going to select our object which we want to transform the pattern of and we're going to go to object, transform and rotate. Now you'll see it gives a little preview if you tick this option of what it's going to rotate and because we've got transform objects on it's spinning the whole object and the pattern around by a certain angle. Now we just want the pattern to be transforming so I'm going to detick transform objects and then for the pattern we're just going to do 45 degrees like so. Transform objects off and you'll see there that that's working exactly how I want it to now. So once you're happy with that, go OK. And now there we've got it. We've got our 45 degree hatch applied onto our object. If we want to apply it back onto this one as well, we just select that and use the eyedropper tool to copy the properties of that previous one. So that's our hatch and our line weight added to these particular cargo containers we've got here. Now I also want to add a little label to each of these just to denote them for this particular diagram. Um, to do that I'm just going to create a kind of line coming up from my object like this and we're going to have a kind of button or label at the end of that line just using the circle tool here like so. I want to make this line distinctive from my outline so I'm actually going to make it slightly thinner and we're going to give it a dash just by selecting the stroke panel clicking the tick on the dashed line here and we're going to make it a three point dash. Three points are good kind of starting um, dash line if you just want a kind of basic dash which can be used for sort of any scale. Three points quite good there. 
And then for the circle, we're actually going to fill this in white so you can see this slightly clearer against that grey background, like so. And we're going to put the line weight on this down to 1 as well. I think it's quite important with line weights, you sort of line weight your objects with the hierarchy you want them to be in the scene. Now, for this particular diagram, I want the kind of thickest line weight to be around the objects I'm trying to sort of show in this. So I'm keeping that as the thickest and any other labels we're putting down to a kind of one point line weight. Um, on this as well, I'm also just going to add a bit of text just with a number in here just to denote this object. And we're going to just select the letters I'm writing and we're going to match the colour of my line. You'll see by default it's actually given it that hatch as well and the line weight. We don't want the hatch on my letters because it's going to kind of come out a bit too thick there. So I'm just going to deselect the hatch and you can switch around the line colour and the fill colour this just to fill the letters and not give them an outline there I'll just put that in the middle like so you can always use the kind of keys on your keyboard to move around any numbers if you want and I'm just going to center justify that so we can snap it to the middle there so we know it's exactly in the middle spot again that make the circle a little bit smaller just to tweak that so it matches up like so. So there we have our first label. I'm actually going to kind of move this onto the very corner just to give it some justification of where it is so it's not floating. It's anchored to that corner point there like so. And we're going to add another one to this point here just by selecting all these objects just by holding the shift key and selecting them with the left mouse button and then holding down the Alt key to copy and if you click, hold down the Alt key and click and drag it will create a copy of that. Also if you hold down the Shift key while you're dragging it will lock it to that vertical or that horizontal line so we can keep these numbers aligned and I'm just going to move it across, line it up at that point again and then extend the line down to match and we'll just change this number to number 2 like so. And there you have it. So what we've done there is we've just created a diagrammatic overlay to this image using hatches and creating our custom hatch, which we've used for here. We've transformed that hatch to align it at a 45 degree angle on here. And then we've also added some colored labels and some different line types for denoting those labels. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.